In today's new video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a recent research article that was published and it's about how walking and running may strengthen the intervertebral disc. Hey, how's it going everybody? Remy Sovereign here from RemySovereign.com. In today's new video, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be doing a little research review about a recent article that was published and it's about how walking and running may strengthen the intervertebral disc. So before I jump into what this research article kind of entails and what it encompasses, I got to actually thank one of my subscribers, Jose, for actually sharing this research article with me because he was the one who stumbled upon it and shared it with me. So if you're watching Jose, thank you. I really appreciate it. And to jump into things, this recent article was published just a few months ago and it's titled Running Strengthens the Intervertebral Disc. And so what this research article is about and what the authors did within the study is they took three separate groups. The first group was individuals who did not perform any sports or running for the past five years at a minimum. The second group was joggers who ran 20 to 40 kilometers per week for the last five years at a minimum. And the third group was long distance runners who ran 50 kilometers or more per week for the last five years at a minimum. And all individuals were aged between 25 and 35 years old and they were both males and females. And so what they did was they conducted MRI T2 weighted imaging scans on each individual and they looked at the T11 to T12 disc, L1 to L2, L2 to L3, L3 to L4, L4 to L5, and L5 to S1 discs. And what they found was that the relaxation times with regards to these MRIs were significantly higher in the 20 to 40 kilometer group and 50 kilometer group when compared to the non-running or sporting group. And so what these MRI relaxation times, these higher relaxation times in, would indicate is that they have previously been strongly correlated with a higher water content in the intervertebral disc and to a lesser extent have shown a weak correlation to higher proteoglycan content in the interver intervertebral disc. So what this higher water content and higher proteoglycan content would indicate is better hydration within the spinal disc with, with regards to these runners when compared to the non-runners or non-sporting individuals. And so this is important because this higher water content may indicate greater anabolic properties or greater hypertrophy, hypertrophy within the spinal disc or hypertrophy properties. And why this is important guys is because running itself may act as an activity or exercise to help strengthen the intervertebral disc and build it up in terms of something similar to how maybe a muscle builds. Uh, when you think about doing maybe a bicep curl and we stimulate the bicep under load, over time if we consistently do that, we're gonna build our bicep up, it's gonna grow. So the same kind of principle may be applied here to a spinal disc. So another important thing that they measured as well was the disc height and relevance or in relation to the vertebral bodies. And so they found that there was a significant or increase in disc height in comparison to the vertebral bodies for only the 50 kilometer group. Now they didn't find this for the 20 to 40 group or the non-sporting group, but that may just may indicate because those individuals are running 50 kilometers or more per week for the last five years, because they're doing more running, they may be getting more of that stimulation, more of that grow growth within the intervertebral disc. And so this is the first research that I've actually read or seen with regards to how exercise is beneficial in humans for the intervertebral disc. And there's imp important takeaways here, guys, because if running, specifically jogging, can stimulate anabolic properties in the intervertebral disc, this could have future implications in terms of maybe developing a recovery program or for future research in the future with regards to developing a walking program or running program in an, indiv in an individual with maybe a disc herniation or disc bulge in the lower back. Because if we maybe develop that walking program or running program, we could maybe stimulate some spinal disc growth with regards to maybe increasing more cells, getting more nutrients into this because we know with movement, we're gonna allow for more, we're gonna allow for nutrients to move into the disc. And another important consideration what they looked at in this uh, study as well is they looked at sitting time over the years as well between each groups and the sitting time was significantly lower for the runners when compared to those non-active individuals so that also can play an important role as well here but key point here guys is that it seems that exercise itself with regards to walking and running may play an important role in spinal disc hypertrophy and creating that anabolic window or anabolic kind of property for stimulating spinal disc growth now obviously there's some limitations here because there may be an, an optimal loading period for the spinal disc and we don't know what factors genetics and nutrition are playing for as well or are playing here as well and we know that under kind of flexion and twisting this is what causes spinal disc injuries to occur so there seems to be an optimal loading period because if we're loading too much then we would be causing damage but if we're not stimulating enough 
we may not get any growth at all. So there's where a future kind of avenue may be as well, is to look at what an optimal kind of loading or stimulation would be for spinal disc growth and to kind of stimulate spinal disc hypertrophy. But nevertheless, this is a very interesting article and this is great for kind of future research to maybe uh, be developed or looked around in terms of maybe uh, looking at maybe a disc herniation in the lower back and look at how maybe a walking program uh, compared to a non-walking program with someone with a disc herniation uh, could influence the recovery and look at maybe if there's any differences. So that's one thing that would be interesting to see. But nevertheless, guys, uh, in terms of maybe from a recovery point of view, this is why I think a walking program would be important to some people who are able to walk with regards to maybe problems within their uh, lumbar discs, maybe they have a herniation or bulge, because that walking could maybe stimulate some hypertrophy and cause more of an anabolic kind of growth within the disc and help maybe repair any damaged uh, kind of tissue or damage on the annulus or nucleus with regards to the spinal disc. Now, guys, if you're someone that is currently maybe following a walking program, or you're someone that has maybe made a recent recovery from a disc herniation, you got back to running, I'd love to kind of hear your story about what maybe you're currently doing for your recovery program or recovery plan. Or if you just found this uh, research interesting, I'd kind of maybe love to hear maybe your thoughts. Now, what I think I'm gonna do here, guys, is I'm, I might do a weekly kind of show or episode here. We're gonna be reviewing certain research around sport performance, various injuries, injuries, specifically lower back injuries and spinal disc injuries. But if there's anything you want me to maybe touch on, and if you want me to consistently do videos like this, please be sure to leave a comment below as I just kind of love to hear some of your thoughts. And if you guys enjoyed this video, guys, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And until next time, guys, I wish you guys all the best and a successful, a successful and productive day and take care.